Welcome, educator friends, to my channel where we dive into the practicalities of online teaching and learning. I've just added some new H5P interactivities to a Moodle course that you may want to experience for free. Despite the promise of an engaging and consistent experience, the current online teaching and learning landscape often leaves us wanting for more. We envisaged it as powerful, accessible, and ready to reach learners on a massive scale. Yet achieving true learner engagement remains a challenge. In our quest for solutions, we're turning our attention to H5Ps, drag and drop. Used correctly, this application could help to be the transformative tool we need to help make online learning more engaging and achieve the teaching and learning outcomes that we require. While the relationship between active engagement and improved performance is well established, the specific strategies that work best can vary based on factors such as the subject matter, the learner's preference and the learning context. Therefore, educators need to tailor their approaches to best suit the needs of their students. H5P's drag and drop could be another arrow in your quiver. Join me as we embark on a journey to explore the potential of H5P drag and drop and refine the way we educate online. In today's example, we are creating drag and drop interactivities to assess non-trivial business leadership outcomes at Bloom's taxonomy level 1, 3 and 5. Experience these tools in action in my free Moodle course linked below. Don't miss out, take a look before it gets old. Bloom's taxonomy classifies cognitive skills into six hierarchical levels, arranged from lower order remembering skills all the way up to higher order creative skills. In our exercise today we will try and elicit responses from learners at three of these levels. First, where they display remembering skills, remembering for example that when demand increases, prices increase, all else being equal. Second, where they must apply their knowledge to solve a problem, for example, of price movement when a certain event occurs. Third, where they must evaluate information and make a judgment call, for example, an investment decision under certain expected conditions. With drag and drop, learners are required to move text or images to designated drop zones. In our three scenarios, participants will drag images of demand and supply curves, demonstrating their ability to recall these concepts, apply them across diverse situations, and accurately evaluate the scenario using the principles of supply and demand. While microeconomics isn't my expertise, I studied it too long ago, the purpose of these examples is to highlight that H5P interactivities can assess more than mere recall. I trust these examples demonstrate that point and I eagerly await your valuable feedback in the comments below or in the free course where I'm demonstrating this. The H5P app is well documented and the actual mechanics of creating interactivities are well explained in the onboard tutorial and help screens presented by H5P. So I won't be adding much value by going through all the motions step by step. In creating these examples, I started with a background image with embedded text elements saved as a .png file. The image was saved directly from a PowerPoint slide to ensure similarity between examples. I added the background image to a new drag and drop interactivity and then created drop zones over the text areas of my background image. I also created several images of the demand and supply curves, also in PowerPoint, and save each as a .png file. These were added as my draggable answers. 
I added them as elements to the interactivity and set them to be droppable in every one of the drop zones. It's crucial to permit users to place the elements in incorrect locations. That's akin to distractors in multiple choice questions. Allowing for the selection of wrong answers provides valuable insights into areas where learners may need further understanding or clarification through your feedback, automated or alive. I then went back to the drop zones and selected the correct draggable element as the correct answer. In this example, question one is linked to answer one. In one of the other examples, two similar draggable items with the correct answer for two different drop zones. I selected both as the correct solutions for both drop zones, adding a layer of complexity and flexibility to the assessment. H5P works in tandem with most LMSs by configuring grades for each activity in the activity settings and establishing activity completion criteria in my LMS, I can effectively monitor the learner's progress on the topic. This approach aids informative assessments, providing valuable insights into individual comprehension and paving the way for targeted support via your LMS. Here is some of the feedback visible to the learner, as well as feedback visible to the teacher. It is important to note that in this interactivity, feedback is not limited to acknowledging whether the learner has dropped a correct or incorrect element onto an answer. As with other H5P interactivities, detailed insights into why a particular choice was marked incorrect can be provided by the teacher when providing feedback. I must acknowledge at least one drawback to my approach. If there are changes to the text elements in the questions, a corresponding adjustment to the background image created in the PowerPoint slide is required. Re-exporting it as a .png file and updating the H5P interactivity are then also required. I should have typed the text elements into the interactivity and aligned them with my drop zones. While my approach may pose some inconvenience, the overall process remains manageable. Please test drive the three interactivities that I created in the complementary Moodle course that I mention in the description below. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe with a bell so that you can catch my next video on H5P's course presentation with interactive slides. See you then.